these are the cranial nerves you can see the ten cranial nerves here the olfactory nerve is the thing which transmits smell here this one then the optic nerves from here these are the optic nerves the vision three four and six three four and six they are the oculomotor the trachlear and the abducens causing eye movement five is the trigeminal which causes the touch and pain seven is the facial nerve which produces uh, the taste it that is the one which acts on the face muscles the muscles on either side of your cheek etc the eighth nerve is the auditory nerve the hearing the going to the cochlea that we will come to this one is the cochlea here the co picture of the cochlea is shown the glossopharyngeal is there that is the ninth that is the muscles of throat and larynx this is what i said the cervical area actually the cervical nerves the vishuddhi chakra also contains this glossopharyngeal and uh, uh, throat larynx area similarly the 10th nerve the vagus it is going to the internal organs so even that is represented in the cranial nerves so there is lot of interaction between these itself then the 11th nerve is the spinal accessory neck muscles and the 12 is the hypoglossal which is responsible for tongue movements and taste this also is included in the vishuddhi chakra so these areas into which the nerve supply should be known okay noradrenaline serotonin and dopamine three neurotransmitter substances how these act this is shown in a venn diagram venn diagram means overlapping things no the noradrenaline is an ergotropic vigilance it's an energy expanding drug so it's not a drug it is produced in our body actually serotonin is a trophotrophic impulse that is energy conservation is its function this is energy expansion this is energy conservation dopamine is for the pleasure drive now these three should function in a balanced way so that it will con con actually it will control your anxiety and irritability it will increase your motivation it will balance your appetite your sex motives your aggression everything and it will make your cognitive function your mood and your emotion the best the supreme the action is like that whenever there is an imbalance there will be some sort of behavioral changes so these three in a beautiful action sequence will determine what you are doing or how you behave the three stratum theory of intelligence this recognizes that there is a single general cognitive ability called the g now this single general cognitive ability the g has added inputs from a range of broad and narrow abilities so g is the general intelligence factor every human being has got some degree of general intelligence no now what are the broad abilities and narrow abilities that put inputs into this g the broad abilities are the fluid intelligence the crystallized intelligence the processing speed the broad retrieval ability broad cognitive speed broad visual perception broad auditory perception general memory and learning narrow abilities there are 64 specialized aptitudes or skills that each relates to a specific broad ability in this actually you can see on this side of the graph start from the infancy and childhood adolescence adulthood and up to old age this is your life span now in this the three three lines you just look at see the blue line is the physiology physiological 
improvement or development red is the aptitude development and the green is the emotional development now we will consider each of this the physiological development is at a very high level for the infancy and childhood because the child has to develop skip you know then after that it becomes minimum that at from this stage that is the stage of the before adolescence the physiological stage changes stop actually it is before the adolescence that the body uh, the body physiology gets all its uh, positive things at that time you have to look after the child very nicely and only then about the aptitudes the aptitudes also has got a very quick rising type of this thing but by about the age 22 or 27 what all cognitive aptitudes the co uh, cognitive powers you have it becomes very top but by the level of age 20 21 22 then if the processing are not going on properly it will naturally that then you will not develop more aptitudes but as the emotions the emotional maturity takes a more longer time to happen actually it happens only when you are when you have reached an adult level and then it doesn't go off it it doesn't leave you the emotions will continue to be with you at a, for a Uh, until your death actually so uh, this is this part the in music psychology it is this part we are concerned with that is the green that is the emotions if you make the emotional maturity uh, uh, even at an earlier stage bring this to this level that is even during the earlier period if the emotional maturity is reached it will go on like this only then you will be always will be a, a a perfectly balanced person that is one thing and also when this happens like that that is when the you and you are have got the emotional and behavior maturity along with that the physiological as well as the aptitude things will go on increasing it will never stop it will not regress so this part is what you are aiming at in music therapy research